Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you guys how to get into Roblox Lua. So basically Roblox Lua is basically Lua, but Roblox interpreted and made it their own and tried to like change it up and they changed it up a lot. So it's it's really unique and I really like how Roblox made their uh, their scripting. And this is, uh, uh, Roblox Lua is fairly easy to new people that want to learn, like just get into the coding world. So like starting on Roblox Lua, it would be a, like a good idea if you want like to get like some simple stuff, get some some ideas and try to get like some algorithms done so you can understand the concept of coding and the getting into the programming world so basically inside of here uh we want to uh, have our explore and our output and our explore basically is our services so our services like workspace uh player lighting replicated first replicated storage and etc these are services we use the all services have their own unique uh their own unique uh skill so basically uh the workspace unique skill basically we're able to see everything inside of workspace and we're able to add stuff into the workspace physically and manually uh let's say uh service script service is where we keep all our service scripts uh, we're going to get into the, what service scripts are and we have stuff like uh starter gui starter pack starter player uh and now we're going to use these this is where we keep our local scripts so they all have their own purpose and uh, we have our own starter gui so we keep our guis in there and these are services and they help us they have a certain plan for us to help us make our scripts good so we have a local script a local script basically will stay on the client side and while we well if we keep it on the client side that means only us we're only the player is able to see so the player being yourself but in the in a regular server script the difference between that is we're able everybody's able to see it so if i made if i made a fireball and i use a server script that means everybody's able to see that fireball that i did and i threw it at the player everybody's able to see that so now uh, what we're going to do for what we're going to do for uh to understand this a little bit more is that we're going to pretend that we have two players here if this first player on the client side shoot a fireball coming out from this direction from the uh, frontwards direction, only he's able to see it. But if I made it on the server side, that means this player right here would be able to see it too. So basically keeping it nice and quick, right? Nice, quick and simple, right? So I, I hope you guys are not confused by that, but it's gonna be a little bit hard to understand for like, uh, for the uh, new people, right? So basically we're gonna, gonna delete these two for right now. So basically this part's parent is the workspace. So you're probably wondering, what do you mean by parent? So what I mean by parent, if I was to look inside the properties tab and basically the properties are a very important tool when scripting because we use these properties to basically script. So let's say you want to make the script, you want to make a script where you change the color of this part here and you want to use the property, you'll most likely use the properties or all the time you're going to use the properties mainly to check, okay, if I want to change the color of this part, what properties allows me to change the color? Oh, there's two brick color and color and color just by itself. Now let's say I want to change it to, uh, let's say blue, navy blue. And I change it to navy blue manually. Now let's say I want the script to do it. Then I'll just go in a script and I'll try to use these properties because this is our, this is helping me. This is helping me by itself, showing me how I can make this part blue. Now going into scripting terms, when you're doing this, if I did this, if I started to change the color inside a service script, this would change because it's inside a service script, right? But if I try to change this color inside of a local script, then the color, if I ran the game right now, it would not change. So for example, let, let me show you. So if I change this back to like gray and let's see, I do. So basically this, this is what we're gonna do, right? So you wanna reference what's on top of the object. So what I mean by that, if we look in here, the parts parent, so we can look inside the uh, properties, the parts parent is the workspace. And this can help you by looking at the arrows. So if I put this in here, uh, look, try to find the first arrow, the first arrow here, and make sure it's inside of it too. So the parts parent now is now the base plate. And now if I take it out right now, the parts parent now is now the workspace. And now that's, ba it's basically super simple. I don't want you guys to get confused by that, but it's gonna be like, hard to understand for like new people so just keep this in mind so basically uh what we're gonna do here is we're gonna basically do game so basically uh, i want you guys to remember this concept so the game is just the overall game dot workspace so the parent of the workspace is game remember that so dot helps us reference the parent and the child and then we can do dot part now we're gonna now we do game dot workspace dot part remember the parent the parts parent is the workspace so we can't do part dot, we can't do part dot workspace dot game, no. 
we have to go right into game that works based part because we do it from we do it from top to bottom we don't do script we don't do a coding from bottom to top and now we want to get the property so once we locate our part here so we look at our part here now we want to get the now we want to get the property so now we're going to look into our properties and let's say we want to use brick color so we're going to do brick color equals brick color so automatically we just put a uh, brick color we put the letter b and we get this here now we want to do brick color dot new and now we want to then we can basically change the color to anything we want so let's say we want to change it to light blue so instead of it being gray it's going to be light blue so now if i was to run the game right now boom you see that it changed the color of the part automatically right so this is so i want you to start making i want you to start learning the properties tab a lot more because this will be super helpful okay so basically uh how we can uh how we can use the uh the, our properties really helps us out with um, making our scripts better so if we want to change the size of this so we see this size here it's four one it's four one two so we're gonna do game dot workspace dot part dot remember now since so uh, remember these blue things will show the properties so now we're gonna do dot size and then when you use size, think of it like this. If we're using three values, we're gonna use vector three. If we're using two values, we're gonna use vector two. But you'll never, you'll rarely use vector two, so just use vector three. We're gonna do vector three dot and we're gonna let's say we want to change the size by ten by ten by ten. So think of it like this. Uh, this is really helpful. So when we say by ten by ten by ten, we're gonna make this this x axis right here come out ten, make the y go up ten, and make the z go across ten. So basically in front. So now if I was to go back here and I was to run the and if I want to run the game, boom, the block got bigger and the color also changed. That's a really big difference of what just happened. Now we see we're able to move it around. See, uh, if we look inside our property, the color is changed to light blue, like what our script said. If we go to our size here, it says 10, 10, 10. So everything changed perfectly. And let's say we want to, let's say we move this and we put it inside the local script. And we delete and we just delete this service script right here so nothing happens right so let's say uh we do the same thing what we put it inside the local script and we run the game you see nothing nothing happened you're wondering why nothing happened and this happened because this is a local script and uh, and this is only going to happen on the client side so the only way we're able to see this change uh, depending on what our script says is if I was to play the game if I was to play the game then this then this block would been would have been light blue and the size would have been 10 by it would have been 10 on every side of the x axis y and z so I don't want this to, I don't want it to be confusing but I want to make it straightforward so uh, scripts really what depending on what kind of scripts you use really matter on like how how it's going to affect your game so if you make a whole fireball script in the local side it's really going to affect your game because only you'll be able to see it unless you want it that way so that's going to keep it i just want to give you the heads up and tell you that's what well, that's what's going to happen and basically uh we are uh, i just want to the our final thing i want to go over is the output and i just want to uh, go over roblox studio and just make sure that everybody knows what what i use so it can help you better your education for roblox lua we're going to have our output our output helps us with debugging and helps us with errors so if i was to let's say let me get this script back in here let me delete this here let's say if i was to do this here right and if i was to run the game it would tell me the error of what happened here it's going to tell me uh, so actually i'm going to do it right so we can see here we already have a red line here but if i was to run the game right now we got an error so it says workspace.script2 expected identifier when phrasing expression so it says got and then it says our little parenthesis here so what's in the little semicolon is what's going to tell us what the error is so basically using the output helps us with errors so that should be really helpful and that was basically going to be like our tiny tutorial of like roblox deal like the general basis of what you should and should know what you really should know and if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like and we're going to keep it we're going to keep up these videos consistently we're going to try to do three tutorials uh, a week keep it up so you guys can learn a lot more about roblox lua if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like comment and hope you guys have a nice day